Are your villagers all dying while trying to gather socks from the dead? Have they all gained a suicidal personality and started punching skeletons in the face? Are all your farms on fire due to storms? Well, if the answer to those questions is yes, this isn't going to help you. This is the tutorial to help you start and survive in the early stages of Rise to Ruins. So let's get directly into it. So first of all, you will see the map. We are on survival because that's how I've always played the game. And we are going to jump into one of these. Each of these is a different map on the game board. We are going to jump into Coast Bridge to show you how the game works. Let's do this. So the first thing you'll notice is the big, massive flashing place camp button. But the first thing you need to know about that is where to place it. You need main resources around the base for easier access. So you need a source of crystals for magic. A source of stone, in this case sandstone, for building. A source of food, in this case cactus. And a source of wood, in this case just trees. You need these four resources around your starting place to actually survive for long. There's also a fifth resource, water, but we'll get to that because you can get an alternative source of water. And another thing, do not build close to the edge or you will die by massive amounts of undead. But of course, I'm going to put my camp down just here near the edge because I don't care if I die, you may have different plans. The first thing you'll see is your initial villagers and your resources spawning in. That will appear on the menu. This is the job menu, this is the build menu. Obviously these are the buildings, these are the jobs. Right now as you can see we only have builders in the job menu. And as you can see they're doing their job. So the menus of the jobs are universal. Any building which has builders in it but also add builders to other building things which have that. So you don't have to go to all of your farms and individually add farmers, you can just do it from the individual menu over here and add them to all of it. As you can see we have 24 builders, maximum 24 builders in it, and 24 builders doing the job. If I do this you can see it's removing builders who will go to their job and just quit. You need to remember this if you're building more than one building, and you need to add people into that job afterwards. So, first of all your people need housing very important. If they don't have houses, they will of course start dying. So I'm going to put down three tents just to start off, and you can see my people building them. So your builders will grab resources if designated. They're the only ones who will do that, otherwise you need dedicated resource gathering buildings. So to start off with that, I'm going to enable the harvest wood, as you can see here. Light green means they can activate it. Red means they can't reach it, and dark green means someone's going over to harvest it. So we're going to have rocks and wood down here to actually start building up. We'll soon see them start glowing darker green as people go and grab the resources. But anyway, you need housing. Your people need houses to survive, your people need houses for food, your people need houses to have sex in, and your people need houses to slowly regain their health. Very, very important. If you don't have houses in winter and summer, your people will die from heat or cold, depending on time of year. So very important to have maximum houses. Over here you can see I have 40 people and only 12 houses. Very important to make sure that's good. The other mostly important building to have down is a farm. We're going straight down for large farms because we need the food. Without food, your people will die. So as you can see, we have houses down, we have farms down. We also need some source of water to do the farms. Right now we're going to put down a well. Now we have hit the maximum amount of building slots, as you can see up here, 8 of 8. So the more better way to get more building slots is an ancillary building, or to upgrade your camp. The ancillary buildings can be found in the aid, and they can be upgraded. You put one of these down, when it is built it will add more building slots. To get more ancillary building slots, this one of one here, you need to upgrade your camp. So you upgrade your camp, you can add more ancillary buildings. You can upgrade your ancillary buildings to add even more buildings, so you slowly upgrade things to get better. Every building in the game can be upgraded, or will soon be constantly upgraded, so make sure you keep on top of that. When you click the upgrade building button, it will tell you how much it needs, so you can actually start or go back. So that building will need six and six, and of course that will get upgraded, I'll be able to put another ancillary building, I'll have more buildings to put down, this will get built, I'll be able to put more buildings down. Very important to know that. As you can see, my guys are grabbing resources. Something important to note when building, you do have the grab tool. You can just grab the resources yourselves and drop it on buildings. If you think your guys are too slow or lazy, 
you can just help them out. This of course uses magic resources. As you can see up here, the orange is how much resource it's going to use from your bar, and the blue is how much you have. Any kind of resource being destroyed by you or your people will add these little wisps which follow you. When they touch your hand, you gain a little bit more mana. So yeah, grabbing resource at the beginning also gives you resources at the beginning. So I'm just going to help out my guys just to prove it. There you go, as you can see, we're helping them out. We're upgrading and then we'll be able to put down more buildings. So the initial start to the game is upgrade your camp to make sure you have enough food and have enough buildings for your people to sleep in. That's very important. That's what you need for the very basic beginning. Food and shelter. So I'm just going to quickly cut here and we'll get it when we have some more housing. That's this upgrade and we have this camp over here. And we are back in. So as you can see, we have all the houses. We actually have a population of 40 and 42 spare spaces. We have two ancillary buildings because of this upgrade and 15 of 16 buildings are built. Now if you go down here, the well is still being built. But as you can see, we have some makeshift rain catchers. They are catching water, very important for the farms. Now again, you need workers as it says. So I could go over here and put the workers down or I could go individually to the building and do it that way. It is much easier to use the thing on the side. So I've enabled two people to work here, which will come out of our unemployed people. We also need some farmers, let's enable them. So farmers will need food. Food we have to designate, of course, like that. So the farmers will go and grab the food and take it to the farm. That noise means nomads have appeared. There are two ways of getting new population. Nomads will appear periodically and randomly, and they will just join your village eventually. They're on the map somewhere right now, slowly making their way towards me. There they are. All your people can have sex in tents. That's all we have. So yeah, it's going to be very intense sex because we only have tents. But that's how it works. And obviously your people will have more sex and get more villagers if you have more spare housing. Like if I put an extra house down, there's a greater chance of them actually doing it because you have more populated space. So right now, I have enabled two people to do water. There are three ways of gathering water. The makeshift rain collector, the makeshift well, which I can also, you know, upgrade. And of course, the actual purifier. Oh look, see they're joining us and it's loud. So the final way of gathering water is the water purifier down here in the food and water tap. You put that down and they can grab water from the ground. It's the only other way to get water. So you can get it from the rain, from underground, which is both clean water, goes instantly into your buildings, or from the purifier, which goes over here and will take it from the ground, because otherwise your people will not take the water sources themselves. As you can see, the farms are active. We need more farmers. And as you can see, the nomads, the exact amount of space we had. The nomads tend to come more often when they have space. So that covers basics. You need to make sure you always have food. You always have shelter. You always have some form of water so your people don't dehydrate during summer. And also to keep your farms tended. And of course, keep an eye on your jobs. If I have too many builders, I take the builders off and I put them somewhere else. Organisers, by the way, work inside your ancillaries and they gather resources. You also find organisers inside other buildings because they are storage buildings. Okay, so we are back in right now as my village centre gets upgraded. So the farmers will grab the food from outside and they will take it to the farms where they will tend to it. They won't need to grab any more food. Once the food has gone in, they will tend to it. It will get better tended. And obviously they will chop down the food and then replant the food. Any food outside of the base which can't go inside your farms will get taken straight to your village centre by your farmers for extra food. Very important to know that. So you can actually gather extra food while your farms are slowly growing. So as you can see, night time is slowly happening. The first night you will not be attacked. You are safe. You are awesome. You can plan and prepare. The second night onwards, the enemies will start attacking you at night. They'll come in larger and larger waves and more powerful waves as time goes by, so you will need to start looking at defences. But first of all, let's show you how to actually get those defences. So, what you need to do is go down to your harvesting buildings. 
you will need to harvest. Builders can harvest while they're building, but every other building actually needs a supply of resources. Your builders will not go gather for them. So you have the crystal harvestry, obviously for crystal. You have the lumber shack, obviously for lumber. And you have the mining facility, obviously for stone and rock. Like I say, the builders will build those with available resources which they can harvest themselves. Everyone else needs a building for it. So if you want to make arrows or so on, you actually need a building gathering wood first. So let's put a lumber shack down, put a mining facility down, a crystal harvestry down, and we will meet back in a second. Okay, and we're back in. Night has just arrived, so I couldn't build any closer to the crystal down here because there are bloody flowers in the way. So, yeah, you can destroy terrain, slowly but surely. It will not give you really much resources, but you can destroy them. So I'm going to use the destroy tool down here, destroy terrain, and mark it for annihilation. Take that, nature. You're in the way of progress. So just destroying the flowers so I could have built closer. You also have a pause a building option down here and a dismantle building option down here. Up here we have the makeshift mining facility. Let's add some people to it. So we're going to have two crystal harvesters, four lumberjacks, let's have six lumberjacks and four miners. Of course, as you can see, it's showing red. We don't have the people, so we're going to have to remove some builders. The builders will leave, become part of the working class and go work somewhere else. So we need to keep an eye on who has actually got the right amount of people and we're going to drop it down to 15. So what those buildings will do is grab the resources on their own and store them. It will also help out your builders because then they don't have to mine it themselves. So it helps out everyone in the end. But now you actually have resources gathering, you can start looking at defences, which you will of course need. You have the Attract Tower, which of course needs more extreme resources. You can actually turn your wood into boards and your stone into uh, your rocks into stone. You will of course need the manufacturing items for that to actually refine them. You have the Banish Tower, the Ballista Tower, as you can see this needs cut stone. You can't build these at the beginning. You have the Bow Tower, which just needs wood, crystal and rock. So your first thing you'll be needing is a Bow Tower. As you can see it shows you the range, I'm just going to put it down here to show you. These can fire over the first two levels of wall, but not the third one. You have the Bullet Tower, which needs wood, crystals and rocks. These just use rocks to fire, or bullets. So you need to use rocks to get turned into bullets, and a special building I will show you afterwards. You have the Elemental Bolt Tower, which needs Crylithium and board, so that's much more advanced. You then also have the lightning rod, the phantom dart tower. As you can see, this fires low level magic and requires an essence collector. It does work on wood and crystals. Once that is down, of course, you just leave them there and you will be needing special abilities. The static towers, spray towers, you will of course have to work on them. This is a crash course on getting them up and running, not an in-depth one. If you want in-depth, I of course do Let's plays on this and no other stuff available, but this is a crash course to get you to survive for as long as possible. And of course you have the stone, the stone golem, the stone, the stone golem combobulator and the wood golem combobulator. This requires rocks, this requires wood. These will slowly spawn golems. So I'm just going to quickly do something so I can carry on building. I'm going to put another ancillary down, you can't do this. There we go, instantly built to give us four more slots. So as you can see, these are being built. The Golem Combobulators and the Makeshift Phantom Dart Towers will of course need a special building to function. You will need to start looking at magic. With magic you have the Crystal Motivator which motivates your crystals to grow down here. You also have the Cullis Gate which will allow you to add and leave people. And of course you have the Essence Collector. The Essence Collector sucks in those little wisps I've been showing you. I'm just going to put it straight down without building it. And turns it into mana. So if I wasn't in the way, it would go straight to the, see that? It's slowly circling, and it would then go straight into buildings that need it, which will be the dart towers and the golem combobulators. For the other two buildings, the bow tower and the bullet tower, you will need ammunition. Ammunition for your weaponry is found in manufacturing. For your bow towers, will you need arrows. That will be at the boyers. The boyers will turn wood into arrows. That's why you need wood to be gathered. You also have the tumbler which turns rocks into stone balls and those are used for your machine gun turrets and other things like that. So you will of course be needing people to keep your turrets 
completely just really armed up. You do need turrets to be armed. So another way of getting extra essence, by the way, is the crystal refining. So let's go straight into refining. So there are three levels of refining. There is the crystallery for the crystals. There is the stone cuttery for the rocks. And there is the lumber mill for the wood. Wood gets turned into boards. Rocks get turned to cut stone and crystals get turned into cryolithium. You will need all three of these for future buildings. Of course, the rocking right now is because we're currently under attack. Because I've not been working to our defences. There we go, he's dead. Also, my building's now on fire. So, we're going to go through two or three more things. So, you do need to know that. This is a crash course tutorial. So, you need to make sure you have crystalleries, stone cutteries, and lumber mills for the future. One of each will, of course, be very useful. You will be needing defensive towers around your base. You also have access to other things. You have access to walls. You can make your own defensive fortifications using these. So, you have the wood wall, which is basic and can be shot over. You just go down, like, just drag this, like that. You have the stone wall, which is a lot sturdier. It can also be shot over. So as you can see, I've done that. That's now basically a line. And of course, you have these stone walls, which are extremely sturdy. They're the sturdiest, but they cannot be shot over. So if you have this here, turrets cannot shoot over here. While this, turrets can shoot over from here to over here. One thing to note, that building walls will block your line of influence. If I just go cut escape, because I can, the green thing is your line of influence. As you can see, I can build anywhere inside the green and not outside it. If you want to expand your line of influence inside your walls, you will be needing a light source, which is here. You put a fire pit here, they can't cross over it, they can't attack it, but you'll suddenly be able to see inside and outside, so you want to make sure that you can see inside your walls so you don't cut yourself off from the outside world. Very, very important, you need a mixture of defensive towers and walls to survive, and let's go to the final thing, your spells. Now, as you know, Zero is the grab tool, you can grab people, you can just throw them around, you can grab enemies, you can grab resources, you can do whatever you like with it. Then of course the next one is send to Limbo. Limbo is how your people first came in. You click on anyone like this guy, he gets sent to Limbo, which means they're available on that world map to use in another area. You can do resources, let's go for that guy there, and that piece of wood. You can do resources, you can do people, you can do even enemies if you feel like it. But they are now in Limbo. To get them out of Limbo, the next one. As you can see, it is cycling, it is now on rock. I'm ready for the cycle, goes to the next one, it's now on villages, so I can bring people in from Limbo when I have stored there. So if you have another village, you can bring people into here. Not too useful now, but a future mechanic, you should be able to have multiple villages and use one to fund the other. As you saw against the zombie, we have the fire blast spell. Again, the orange shows how much it uses. Do that. That's it, you're too lazy. You have the motivate land spell. More effective in summer when it's raining. You can use it to motivate wood, motivate food, it will of course start growing, as you can see. You have the Earthquake spell, which does damage in an area, and has a chance of showing stone. You have the Flame spell, very simple, a bit of fire. You have the Dissolve spell, this is used on crystal. You can use it to dissolve crystal, and resources like wood and so on, which turns them into mana which again can be used for places like your makeshift essence collector. So if you need resources in a hurry, drop a dissolve down and dissolve things. You then of course have healing aura, very self-explanatory, it heals your people. You have a summon holy golem, a temporary golem to defend your place in case of major attacks, like that zombie over there. You then have recall, which recalls your villages to the centre. You have banish, which banishes enemies to a random place, you could really be buggered with that. You then have storm, which does an extremely dangerous spell, which causes a huge lightning storm. It's like either rain or snow, depending on the time of the year, but good if you need rain, bad if you're going to set yourself on fire. You then have Resurrect. has a 50-50 chance of resurrecting a guy into either a very unhappy ghost which attacks you, or a villager again. So the spells are very important, but again you need to keep an eye on your mana. You get more mana from happy villagers. Your villagers become happy by being idle and talking to each other. Your people are happy while being idle and actually being friendly. These people are very unhappy. So if your people are idle, they will make friendships, they will be happier, they aren't being attacked. They will then become lovers and then have sex in tents. So you have to balance between happy idle villagers and actual working villagers. But again, that is up to you. 
These are all the basics of the game. You now know how to do towers. You now know a good way of keeping your people going. Make sure you have all your tents ready. Make sure you constantly have a huge supply of food because winter and summer will destroy you if you don't. And make sure you're defending any and all avenues. There are, of course, buildings on the map. As you can see, makes you bow towers. You can claim them when they're within your range. And these things here are enemy spawns. The enemy will spawn them. You need to destroy them or they will constantly keep spawning things on you. The best way to do that is fireball, spells, flames and so on to destroy them because these are enemy spawn buildings. They will destroy you if you leave too many up and they will keep on coming. So that's all I have for you in this Crash Course early tutorial. If you have any questions, please of course put them down in the comments. If you're watching from the actual website itself or the game, Leave comments on here, I'll of course be doing more tutorials for more advanced things, but of course this is just the early Crash Course tutorial, I hopefully it will let you survive for longer than I did when I first played the game. Remember, this game is difficult, this game is tough, play it on survival and hope for the best. But I have been the Fallen Shogun, this has been Rise to Ruins. Ciao's for now's people. Bye bye.